Hello everyone, welcome to Golden Heart Tarot. My name is Ren. I hope you all are safe and happy. Today we are asking who has their eye on you and why. As usual, we have three groups. Group one is the Empress and the Wild Unknown Tarot. Group two is the Magician and the Witch's Tarot. And group three is Awakening and the Wizard's Tarot. I'll be doing one big shuffle at the beginning, but if you want to jump straight into your reading, those timestamps are in the description box. I'll see you at your group. Hello group one, if you chose the Empress and the Wild Unknown Tarot, this will be a reading. We're asking who has their eye on you and why? Let me get your cards laid out and then we'll get into your reading. We have the Five of Swords on the back of the deck, two, the Father, 64, the Offering, 48, the Underworld, the Sun, the Five of Wands, the Queen of Pentacles, the Tower, the Seven of Cups, the Nine of Swords, the Empress again, the Hermit, and the Page of Cups. All right, Group One, who has their eye on you and why? Well, no matter the gender, this person has a strong masculine energy. They carry themselves with authority. They are strategic and come across as supportive. They may not be your boss, but they come across as somebody's boss. <laughs> you know, they're clean. They take care of themselves. They're intelligent and capable. This person has actually been through a lot. And they've been a good person through it. You know, whatever they've been through has made them very strong in themselves. They know who they are. They're supportive and a provider, but sometimes they can be distant. Sometimes they pull away. And then other times they'll make sacrifices. They'll sacrifice their own wants and needs for someone else. They seem complicated, but I don't know if they really are. I think they have a strong moral code and they take care of themselves first. After that, they'll give everyone everything else they have. I think this person is very accepting of people. There's the feeling that they know the secrets of life. They've been there, done that. They understand how it works. 
I think they learned from a very early age how the world works. So while they may be very understanding and accepting of people, this person has very strong boundaries. And they are not shy or apologetic about setting them. I think this person comes off as kind of a hard ass, but, but they are a very genuine and kind person on the inside. So how can you connect with this person or how might they come into your life? I think you'll be feeling good and so will they and it'll be one of those kismet type of meetings. It'll just be a spark. But I'm also picking up like an explosion, like a ticking time bomb. <laughs> Do you have issues with authority, group one? I'm just wondering. <laughs> I'm getting the vision of two marbles smacking together and then their trajectory is completely changed. This person may come into your life when you're going through some major changes or they may be a catalyst for some major changes in your life. So what are this person's intentions for being drawn to you? We have the five of wands could be competition or some kind of tension. I think you may make this person feel a certain way and they are not sure why. Let me pull another card here for some clarification. The Eight of Pentacles. This may be competition or tension because you're in a work environment. But I think their motivation is to see if they can work with you. The nature of their attraction is that they trust you. But it's like not only can they trust you, but, but you care for them and the things that you do. So there's an emotional element to it. I mean, this is a person that knows about life. They know about people. So they also know a real one when they see one. So what are the qualities about you that have drawn this person's attention? I think you are very positive. Like no matter what's going on, even with the world burning around you, you're calm under pressure. They may have a strong masculine energy, but you have a very strong feminine energy. With the Empress twice, it's a crazy strong feminine energy. You can't be shaken. Or not easily, anyway. Maybe stirred. <laughs> As for mutual interests or shared goals that bring you together, it may be your idealism, your want for a better world, there's some kind of belief system here that not everybody has. I also have the world card here. So yeah, beliefs on having a better world, whatever that means to you, making the world a better place. I think the belief system may just be your sincerity, that it's something that can be accomplished in this jaded world of ours. <laughs> How can you recognize the signs or signals that this person is interested in you? They will act the opposite of that. <laughs> they may come across as introverted or quiet, but I wasn't really getting that from them. Nah, I don't think that's right. Let me pull another card here. What's the Nine of Swords, Spirit? What's the Nine of Swords? What's the Nine of Swords? The King of Swords. Yeah, so yeah, they hold back. They may come across as rude, even. Standoffish. <laughs> that may be why I was getting the tension and the ticking time bomb. You can tell that they like you because they act like they don't. <laughs> they will treat you differently. Like, they may seem very open with everyone else and very friendly, but when they get around you, they are quiet and they just look at you. <laughs> they could even be a little mean. I think it's because you confuse them. Like, they feel things towards you and they're just not sure why. But it's like they want to know, so they're interested in you. That's why they're watching you. Look at that owl. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, what the hell is going on? Like, what is this? It freaks them out, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's like you make them feel a certain way and they're not used to anyone being able to do that. So I think part of their motivation for being drawn to you are because they're trying to figure out what it is. This person felt something and they're confused about it. 
So are there any specific actions you can take to encourage this person's interest in you? Not really. You already have it. So continue to be your great, big, beautiful self. Remain unbothered. Don't let their behavior affect your own. Don't let anyone's behavior affect your own. It's really interesting. They're the father tree and you're the empress tree. <laughs> and then there are, there's a tower tree in between you. But there are also these crescent moons in three of these cards. I think you both have been offered an opportunity with each other. But with the seven of cups there, it is up to both of you to choose it. So there you go. And what potential challenges or obstacles might arise in this connection? Well, a big one is that neither of you will take any action. With the hermit card down here, they may just stick their head out of their turtle shell every once in a while. <laughs> you might hide from the light. This connection may challenge your perspectives in some way. You may choose other things over it. But the thing is, is that those other things are illusion. This connection is the real thing. There's just a possibility that one or both of you will not see that. You won't recognize it for what it is. The only real thing. And how might this person enhance your life? I get that this connection is going to be pretty triggering, at least at first. Now this person already has their eye on you but you may or may not know who they are. But I get that you will be triggered because you're going to recognize yourself in them and they're going to have the same experience. This connection is here in order for you both to learn something about yourselves, something important. And it depends on how impactful it is for you both. With the sun card, I would say pretty impactful. But what I'm getting with the page of cups is that they may bring you back to a time when love was simple, before you've had your heart broken a million times. This person is going to show you how to love someone else while maintaining love for yourself. And if you've healed a lot of wounds in your self-love and self-worth, then you won't be triggered. If there needs to be more healing, you will be. So different outcomes for different people. But no matter what, you'll be learning about love. All right, group one. Well, good luck with that one. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so very much for joining me. If you enjoyed this reading, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, group two. If you chose the magician in the wizard's tarot, this will be your reading. We're asking who has their eye on you and why. Let me get your cards laid out, and then we'll get into your reading. We had six of cups on the back of the deck. Seven, the poet, 44, the box, 47, the storm, the high priest, the lovers, the eight of cups, nine of pentacles, the emperor, the queen of wands, the shadow side, which is the devil, Justice and the Tower. A lot of major arcana. So who is this person that has their eye on you? This person is honest. They are a deep thinker. They do a lot of self-reflection. They know how to work within society. So they may have a good paying job, have a home, a car, pay all their bills. Their life seems very structured. They are a logical person. But there's something about them to where they may be trying to break that all apart. They kind of come across as like a mentor, a, a professor, a philosopher, an artist. I think this person is very good at explaining certain concepts or belief systems and breaking them down into simple parts so that you can see them from a different perspective. I mean, this is less about anarchy in general and more about freeing people from specific beliefs that are keeping them stuck. I believe this person is open and friendly, but not someone that really believes in small talk. 
In speaking with them, I believe you would find them wise and insightful. There may be something about them that would also surprise you. The cards aren't really specific about what it could possibly be, so it's probably different things for different people. But I am getting that maybe some of the things they say can be shocking. And I'm not getting good or bad from this, I'm getting that it would be meaningful. So maybe they would say something very insightful about something you're going through, but they would have no idea that you're going through it. And with the storm and the tower, I'm getting it happens quite a bit. In other words, it's not just a lucky guess. So how might they come into your life, or how can you connect with them? I'm getting they may come into your life as part of a community or an organization, a certain event. For some of you, this could be online. But you can also connect with them through your mutual interests. I believe your belief systems are very close to the same. They could also come in as a mentor or someone seeking knowledge and things that you know a lot about. This person enjoys different perspectives, so they're always open to learning new things. So what are their intentions or motivations for being drawn to you? I think this person seeks out deeply meaningful relationships with people, and they have a gut feeling about you. You make a good match. Your values align really well with each other. Their intention would be to establish a loving and harmonious relationship with you, something very intimate and mutually beneficial. It would not be a frivolous connection because this person just doesn't do that. They are open to a relationship, but that's not exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for an experience. The nature of their attraction to you is intellectual and emotional, but there is passion under the surface there. They do find you physically attractive. So what about you has drawn this person's attention? Well, it's your independence. You are self-sufficient. It's also your abundant mindset. They think you have some of the same interests and values and similar personalities. They feel that you just kind of click. You play by the rules up to a point, just like them. But they see that you can break things down too and you see the truth of things. If something is holding you back or is not serving you, you're not afraid to change it. They like how you make things work for yourself. Oh, and did I mention you're incredibly sexy? I'm sorry, you're incredibly sexy. <laughs> so what kind of shared interests or mutual goals bring you together? I think you both are interested in getting to the truth of things to cut away those things that you truly don't believe or don't hold meaning for you and bring in more things that do to know yourself deeply. How can you recognize the signs or signals that this person is interested in you? Well, they're going to be very, very flirtatious. <laughs> I don't think you'll question it. They'll be very kind and social and they will want to share their ideas with you. And you know what? They may just straight up tell you. <laughs> but I think if you don't reciprocate pretty quickly, they'll take that as a no and leave you alone. Like, this person doesn't really play games. And they're kind of like a whirlwind. Like, they'll come in, and if they like you, they tell you. And if you don't respond, they go away. Like, <laughs> that's pretty much it. It's pretty cut and dry. So are there any specific actions you can take to encourage this person's interest in you? Well, you need to flirt back. <laughs> and it needs to be pretty obvious. <laughs> you need to be honest, fair, and single. If you have an on-again, off-again thing with Big Worm, this person ain't going to go for that. I think there's also something about not being afraid. Not being afraid to go there with this person. This person enjoys intellectual conversation and also thinking outside of the box. They also get very, very personal. So if you are in any way judgmental or have reservations about getting that deep with them, that could negatively affect your connection. So keeping your mind open to exploration 
and maybe ask them some deep questions. And it wouldn't matter if it was shocking. I think they'd like it. <laughs> what potential challenges or obstacles might arise in this connection? Timing may be an issue, but also just making time for each other. I get that you both have a lot going on. And there's also something here about keeping the connection balanced, keeping it fair for both of you. You know, with all of the major arcana here, I'm getting the feeling that this connection could be very, very impactful. And with trying to keep the connection balanced, there's a possibility that you could just get lost in each other. So it may be important to revisit your boundaries often. So how might they enhance your life? <laughs> we have the tower. So change, but let me get another card and see what this is about. Spirit, what's the tower? What's the tower? The seven of pentacles. Like, shake things up and see where it lands, and hopefully it'll grow something. <laughs> it's like planting a garden with a potato cannon. <laughs> No, I think it's more of consistently shaking things up over time. So it may not be a huge change, but it will be when you look back on it. I think this person will push you. They will open your mind to new things, new ideas, a new way of being. They could also trigger you in small ways and big ways. So they will enhance your life by assisting your personal growth. Overall, the person that has their eye on you loves your capability. They love your mind. They believe they can share with you without reservation. That you both can have a very fulfilling relationship together. You make them wish that things had been different. And I don't know why I'm getting that. For some of you, this may be someone from your past and... And this whole reading has been things that could have happened. Things that had possibility, but maybe didn't work out. I don't know. Even if that's the case, they still have their eye on you. So the possibility is still there. Well, group two, that is all I have for you. Thank you so very much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this reading, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, Group 3. If you chose Awakening in the Wizard's Tarot, this will be a reading. We're asking who has their eye on you and why. Let me get your cards laid out, and then we'll get into your reading. Back of deck, we have Justice. 39, the Temple. 70, the Thread. 32, the Cave. Strength. Death, the Queen of Pentacles, the Lovers, the Knight of Cups, the Nine of Cups, the Seven of Wands, the Six of Swords, and the Two of Wands. All right, Group 3, so who has their eye on you and why? This may sound a bit odd. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Um, <laughs> no, I think maybe, and I'll, when I go through the cards, maybe it'll become more clear, but I believe there's a possibility that this is not a person, like a human being. This may be spirit or a guide or something like that. So... Just take what resonates here. But for most of you, I believe this is a person. <laughs> and there is a possibility that you have had something with them before. For some of you. So group three, we're going to be practicing our discernment today. <laughs> All right. I'm going to talk about them as if they are a person to make it easier on myself. 
let's get into who or what this is. All right, so this person is unassuming. They are easy to talk to. They are very deliberate in mannerisms and very calm. This is a very spiritual person to a point where they could be considered a spiritual leader or guru, whether they consider themselves that or not. They are introspective. They have spiritual practices. Things like prayer, meditation. They tend to ask deep and meaningful questions. This person has a direct line to the divine. They are aligned with their higher self through their heart space and are very authentic. This person is in search of and has done a lot of work towards connecting to their true self. I believe they can easily relate to others, but they may find it difficult to find people that can relate to them. This person is elevated. There are not a whole lot of people in the world that can truly understand. I mean, this person is peaceful. They stick to themselves. They have a simple life. They may be religious. I'm getting that you may feel connected to them in a way that's more than normal, like more than other people. And that they may feel the same towards you. I don't know. There's just something about the connection that feels different. So how might they come into your life or how can you connect with them? I'm getting to put yourself out there. Like keep doing it and they'll come along. Do things that you're afraid to do. Things that challenge you. I'm hearing that they admire your courage and how you conduct yourself. They may come into your life as assistants during some sort of transformation for you, some sort of change, and you will have a close bond. So what are their intentions or motivations for being drawn to you? Well, it could be to assist you in some way, but let me pull another card for some clarification. Spirit, what's the death card? What's death? The five of cups. So this could definitely be someone from your past. There's regret over some sort of ending. They may want to change things with you. It's like there was an ending and they just want, they want the things that were lost. I believe as part of their ascension, they're being called to either mend things with you or assist you in some way. The nature of their attraction to you is that they feel that they can trust you, that you may be able to relate to them as much as they can relate to you. But there's also an emotional component to it. The Queen of Pentacles was also in Group 1 in the same location. They find you to be nurturing and compassionate. And they also find you to be practical and responsible. So there's a depth to you that they really like. They also feel that you have some of the same core values. And you make some of the same choices. So you may be focused on spirituality and your own alignment. And I think also your energy just feels really good to them. And their energy could feel really good to you. Like it just feels good when you're together. This is for some of you. I'm hearing that they're ready now. So maybe if you had a run-in with them before, they weren't ready or something. Some mutual interests or shared goals that can bring you together. I'm getting that you like to share with others. You like to be helpful, useful, do good things like volunteer, that sort of thing. You like to help where you can, and so do they. I'm also seeing creativity and imagination. So you both may be creative in some way. How can you recognize that this person is interested in you? Well, this person will be like 
pure joy when they're around you. Like they're having the best day ever. <laughs> They'll just be really happy. Like... They will be very open and relaxed with you. Like more so than they are around other people. I mean, this person is unassuming and introspective. They are very calm. But like when they are talking with you, they will light up. There will be excitement there. They will share more about themselves with you. So, are there any specific actions you can take to encourage them, encourage their interest in you? Well, just remain solid, remain trustworthy. You know, don't flake out on them. Be consistent. I'm also getting that they may like a challenge. So maybe challenge them a little bit. <laughs> and also encourage them when they share things with you. That'll help them to open up even more to you. And what potential challenges may arise in this connection? There's something here about the future and different paths you can take. There's a possibility that someone may move. So it's not really a matter of getting along or, or things getting in the way, but there are decisions that will be made in the future that will have effects on your connection. You may have to view this connection as more of an investment and put off instant gratification and take a more long-term view. This person will enhance your life by helping you to find the right path, the path that is right for you. So they are a guide and are there to assist you. They will guide you through decisions and changes and help you make the right choices for you. They will help you to build your confidence and help you to realize how wonderful you are. Group three, you make this person feel really good. You make them feel heard and understood. Some of them feel that they need to take responsibility that they need to ask your forgiveness for some things. But no matter what, they feel very drawn to this connection and to you. That's why they have their eye on you, group three. Well, that's all I have for you. Thank you so very much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this reading, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.